phase of sickness. You know, for the people that go through a natural progression of sickness uh, just before their death, this is actually very, a very painful experience. The Prophet Sallallahu he says in an authentic hadith, Inna lil mawti sakarat, that indeed, you know, death, it has a lot of pain that comes with it. And the Prophet Sallallahu he described himself that he felt, you know, twice the amount of pain that an average individual would feel. Now, what are things that are, that you're required to know about this period of sickness? Number one, is that during this period of sickness, a person may not be in their normal mental state. Meaning that due to that extreme amount of pain or perhaps even due to the old age, they may not be in that normal stage uh, of mental health. So at that time, you have to pay a lot of extra attention to their religious obligations. By religious obligations, I'm going to be talking about three things. Number one, their salah. Meaning that as long as they're conscious, then salah is obligatory upon them to the best of their capability. And you're responsible to help them pray. So if it means that they help need making wudu, then you should help them make wudu. If they need help, you know, being reminded for the times of salah, you should be helping them for their timings of salah. Now in the situation where a person is too weak or too sick to make wudu, then even though water may be available, they are allowed to make tayammum at that time and there is no problem uh, in that. If they're in a situation where they keep falling in and out of sleep and in and out of consciousness, they are allowed to combine their prayers. They will not shorten them, they will just combine them. So Dhuhr can be combined with Asr and Maghrib can be combined with Isha. Now in the phase that they are you know, unconscious for a long period of time, then they can pray all of their Salahs together and they will, be not, they will not be sinful in that state. Number two, you want to make sure that during that time, they already have their will present. Meaning they already have their will, their wasiyah written down. And we'll be talking about the wasiyah towards the end of the halaqa in terms of how is that actually written, what's written inside of it. And then number three, you want to make sure that you're constantly reminding them of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells us that at that phase when a person is, is dying and in that state of sickness just before death, the shahada should be repeated to them frequently. Frequently repeat the shahada to them. And you know, if they're not repeating after you, then encourage them to say it. Literally like almost force them to say it. Because it's very highly encouraged to say it at that time, so that the last words that are said from this deceased's mouth is the shahada. So that is in terms of dealing with the sickness.